All right, we're working in section 6.1. We're on to example 11, which is on page 221. We're solving by factoring. So let's look at this word problem. Solve by factoring. The area of a rectangular poster in the atrium of building one of the Osceola campus is 36 square inches. The length of the poster is five inches more than the width. What are the length and width of the poster? The first thing that we need to have is a formula for area, since we're talking about area here. Uh, the area of a rectangle is found by multiplying length times width. What else do we know? We know that the length of the poster is 5 inches more than the width, so we can write that over here. The length is 5 more than the width, or 5 plus the width. That's an equal sign. All right. We also know that the area is actually 36 square inches. So we can start with this formula. We can substitute 36 here for area. We can substitute 5 plus w for length. And then we'll just have uh, the w left to solve for. So we're going to put this 36 in here instead of area. And we're going to put this 5 plus w in instead of length. That's the substitution part. You could write it as w plus 5 if you like it better that way. They mean the same thing. And then we have this w still here. Okay, so this length turned into w plus 5. And now this is an equation that we can solve for w, so I'm going to rewrite it here. 36 equals w plus 5 times w. The first thing would be to distribute this w, so 36 equals w squared plus 5w. I hope you recognize this as a quadratic equation with this squared term in here. To solve this quadratic equation by factoring, we will need our equation to equal 0, and right now it does not. So we have to subtract this 36 to make this equation equal 0. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit, give us some white space here, and rewrite this. 36 equals w squared plus 5w. I'm going to subtract this 36 because we need our quadratic equation to equal 0. Now, uh, that 36 is not like terms with this 5 over here. Since this one has a w and this one doesn't, these are not like terms. So this is what this looks, this is a tri standard trinomial. So now to factor this, to solve by factoring, you're ready to actually factor this. You can rewrite this if you like looking at it the other way. It's kind of standard to put your polynomial on the left and your equal zero on the right. This is the same exact thing if you like to look at it a bit more this way. When you factor this, you end up with w plus 9, w minus 4, and then you can set each of these factors equal to zero. That's the zero product property we talked about in the last video. And isolate w gives you w equals negative 9, w equals positive 4. Now, um, in a pure math question, these are both solutions, but this was a word problem. So I'm going to scroll back to the problem. What are we solving for? What are the length and width of the poster? Well, since we use W, we would know that W stands for width. So can I scroll this again? There we go. So I have W equals negative 9, W equals 4. We have to reject w equals negative 9 because width of a rectangle cannot be negative. So our width equals 4, but we didn't find length yet. How do we know what length? What's the length? How do we know what's the length? Up here we had a statement that length equals width plus 5, right here. So we're going to pull that down, and we're going to use that to find the length. Length equals width plus 5. So if the width is 4 from here, we'll put the 4 in there, and we'll have length equals 5 plus 4, or length equals 9. In a complete sentence, the length 
is five, and these are where inches. The length is nine inches, and the width is four inches. Don't forget you write to write your units on there. All right, on to example 12, solved by factoring. Sophia found out she will not be able to sell her used intermediate algebra book because the campus is going to use a new edition the following semester. Frustrated, she threw the book up in the air. The function that models this scenario is given by h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 48, where h of t is the height of the book above the ground and t is the time in seconds. When will the book hit the ground? All right. So this is the function we're going to use, and a quadratic function works just like a quadratic equation, but because it's written in function notation, we call it a function, I'm going to write up here, h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 48. Uh, what are we being asked for here? When will the book hit the ground? Well, h is standing for height, t is standing for time. That's what it's telling you here. H of t is the height of the book above the ground, and t is the time of seconds. When will the book hit the ground? We're being asked to find when, so that means we're going to solve for t. If we're solving for t, then they have to tell us h of, h of t, or the height. When will the book hit the ground? Well, what is the height of the book when it's hitting the ground? Its height is zero. So we're going to put a zero in here for height. And that completes our quadratic equation equal to zero so that we can now factor it to solve. All right, looking here, this is a, a trinomial that we might want to use AC method on, but again, it's better if you can get out a GCF first. It looks like the GCF here is eight, 16 maybe, yeah, 16. And because this is a negative sign here, we'll factor out a negative 16. So I still have my zero over here. We'll factor out a negative 16 as a GCF. That leaves me with t squared minus 2t minus 3. And you might be wondering, well, why are the signs? If you factor out a negative GCF, you're basically dividing by a negative. That makes this positive. When you divide by a negative, that makes this negative. You divide by a negative, that makes this negative. If you factor out a negative number as a GCF, it changes the signs in here. You really want to do that because when you're factoring, you want this lead coefficient to be positive. All right, so that's why I factored that negative out to make this t squared positive. And now we have just a standard trinomial, which we can factor again. So we have our GCF here. This factors to be 2 mi t minus 3 t plus 1. And if we scroll up now, we have some white space here. I'm going to actually write this equation down here. 0 equals negative 16 t minus 3 t plus 1. And we're ready to make our small equations. You can ignore this GCF because it has no variables in it. It does not affect your solution. Your small equations are just going to be based on these two factors. So t minus 3 equals 0, t plus 1 equals 0. Solve for t. You have t equals 3, t equals negative 1. Now, t stands for time. In a word problem, time cannot be negative. So we're going to reject the negative solution. And this is our number here for time. It looks like time is going to be 3. What are the units? Um, t is the time in seconds. So this is t equals 3 seconds. So we can answer this in a complete sentence. going to scroll up a little bit more. The book will hit the ground in three seconds. Don't forget to put your units on there. Okay, example 13, solve by factoring. Oliver wants to sell college textbooks. The revenue function is given by r of p equals negative 10 p squared plus 2000 p, where r of p is the revenue and P is the price in dollars. So R is standing for revenue, P is standing for price. At what price will the revenue be zero? 
or what price will Oliver make no money? So we're going to rewrite this function down here. R of P equals negative 10 P squared plus 2000 P. R stands for revenue, so R of P is standing for revenue, P is standing for price in dollars. The question is, at what price? So we're being asked to solve for price. Will the revenue be zero? They're telling us the revenue is zero. Or at what price will Oliver make the money? So we're going to replace zero for revenue here. And again, that makes our quadratic equation equal to zero, so we can start factoring. So we're going to look over here, and we're going to factor out looking for a GCF first. Um, again, this negative sign right here, we're going to factor off as part of our GCF because we want our lead coefficient to be positive. So it looks like the GCF will be negative 10 P. And that leaves us with P minus 200. So factor off negative 10 P. That leaves us with a P over here. If I divide by a negative, this sign changes. Taking off 10 leaves me 10, uh, 200, and the P got factored out. So this is your factored equation now. You're ready to make your small equations. All right, we have a variable here. So we need to make a small equation out of this GCF. So the first equation is going to be negative 10P equals 0. The second equation will be P minus 200 equals 0. This one, of course, comes out to be P equals 200. This one, we're going to divide by negative 10 to isolate that P, and we get P equals 0 because 0 divided by negative 10 is 0. All right, these are both valid answers because neither one of them is negative, and we're solving for the price of the textbooks. The question asked, when will Oliver make no money, or when will his revenue be zero? He will make no money if he prices his textbooks at zero. Obviously, he'll be giving them away, so no revenue there. But if he prices his books at 200, it seems like based on this function, he will have zero sales. So both of these are valid answers. So when we write our uh, sentence, we're going to use both of these in our sentence. Oliver, Oliver will have zero revenue when the price is zero dollars or two hundred dollars. And don't forget your dollar sign, that's your units here. All right, that's it for section 6.1, uh, bringing questions back to class. I'll see you there.